Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here with something a little bit different tonight, a review or really first impressions of a couple of headphone cables that came in. And I don't often review cables. I think in the uh, past couple years I reviewed maybe two headphone cables from one from Meza and one from Apos and a couple of power cables from iFi Audio. But anyway, this is my first impressions of two cables that came in. They're on loan for review by Marcos Custom Cables, and they are out of Sydney, Australia. And these cables are custom made to order, and one similar to these two cables, I believe sells for roughly about 400 US dollars. Uh, these are, the, I think, the second in line or second to the top of the line cable made by Marcos Custom Cables. And I will put uh, contact information in the notes below this video because I don't think they have a website yet. So if I um, give you a way to contact them if you're interested. But anyway, I did um, want to talk about cables for a minute. And I before I took these in for review, I did explain this to Marco that that I personally have never heard a large difference in sound from one cable to another in an analog cable. You know, um, as far as headphone cables, I've used quite a few from t quite a few different companies. And I have heard subtle differences, you know, maybe a little brighter treble in one or another. And I did explain that, that I at this point have not heard a substantial difference between one cable and another. I do appreciate the quality of cables, you know, the quality of the materials, the quality of the build, and, um, you know, some are just a lot nicer than others. But um, I was told by Marcos that he once felt the same and that these cables may surprise me. I may notice a significant improvement in sound. So I'm trying to go into this review with an open mind because, um, like I said, I did review a couple of power cables maybe a year and a half ago. And at the time going into the review, I didn't think power cables would make any difference. But what I did find out after substantial listening time is they did lower the noise floor slightly and I think the reason for that is because they were high quality cables with real good shielding on them and I, what it probably did, the only scientific reason I can really think of that they did lower the noise floor is that shielding prevented the cables from causing noise in my connector cables going between my components. So. You know, there does seem to be some logic to it. So anyway, I'm going into this review with an open mind. And so far, um, I've listened to these cables, but I've not compared them to anything else. So my full review, that will be the difference. I will compare these to several other cables and, you know, see if there really is a difference in the sound. So anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about the cables. Um, like I said, they're all custom made to order. I received two different cables. Both have a full size four pin XLR connection at the amp end. One has mini XLRs connections at the headphone end and the other has 3.5 millimeter connections at the headphone end. And uh, both of these cables are basically the same other than the connections at the headphone end. They're both a silver and copper Litz hybrid. They use 22 gauge, um, the 22 gauge wire with medical grade PVC insulation. Each cable has four cores with 30 strands in each core. The connectors on the 3.5 millimeter cable, that would be the one I have. At the amp end, you've got, they're made by, um, I can't read it, the light's not right here. I wrote it down, uh, ACO, A-E-C-O, and they are made of uh, tellurium, tellurium copper, 
their salad and um, with a rhodium coating or plating on the outside. And both cables do use the same connection at the amp end. And then the connectors at the headphone end are 3.5 millimeter, made by the same company, Echo, and the same thing, solid copper with a rhodium plate on them. And the other cable, the XLR, same thing, same connection at the amp end. And uh, at this end, I guess uh, ACO doesn't make the 4-pin mini XLR connections. This uses connectors made by Fur Furo, I don't know how it's pronounced, Fur Furer Tech, something like that. And um, they are also copper with rhodium, yeah, rhod rhodium plated, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, both of these cables are sleeved in uh, 550 paracord, paracord in a camo. And they are slightly different color. One is a darker green camo than the other. And the splitters, which would be um, this part here, those are made by a company called Via Blue out of Germany. And the solder used and all the connections in these are also by Via Blue, and it is a silver solder. The length of both of these are uh, 1.5 meters, which works out to about five feet. And but like I said, these are all custom made, and you can get them in pretty much any length you want. There is a super hybrid version of these that uses eight cores instead of four cores, and not sure what the price is on those. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about $600 per cable. Um, I'll give you a closer look at both of these. And this is the one with the 3.5 millimeter connection. And once and again, uh, you got the uh, four pin XLR connection. That is a solid copper with rhodinium plating and um, you can see this is a four wire weave covered with 550 paracord about five feet long and you got your 3.5 millimeter connections at this end and then the other cable basically the same a little bit lighter color but with your 4.4 uh, your four pin mini XLR XLR connections and I did ask originally for this cable but because most of my high-end cables or most of my high-end headphones uh, use a mini four pin XLR connection but I did have a few nice headphones that use a 3.5 so Marcos was nice enough to uh, send me both cables for a review so Anyway, this is my first impressions video. I've had these, I don't know, week, week and a half maybe, and I've used both of them several times already. And the first thing that really impressed me is both the build quality and the materials. These are just really nicely built. Uh, the weave is nice, it's even and all that. And um, they just seem real high quality. The paracord, they're very flexible, very soft. They don't make any noise rubbing on themselves. And so, yeah, very impressed. I mean, these are the nicest looking cables that I've used in the, what, four and a half years since I started doing reviews. Um, as far as uh, reviewing these cables, I did get both cables. Uh, the one with the four pin XLR, so far, I've tried the Kennerton Thror, which is the top of the line open back headphone from Kennerton, and the ZMF Atrium. And I've also got the Kennerton Ragnar, which uses the same connectors. So those will be the three primary headphones I use to uh, try these and find out, you know, if there is an actual sound difference. And then the 3.5 millimeter. I've got the Hi Fi, I've already tried them on the Hi Fi Man Aria Stealth and the Hi Fi Man Ananda Stealth. And I do have a few other headphones that I can use these on. And same thing, those will be the headphones that I use, trying them with different amps to find out if, 
you know, the headphone cables actually do improve the sound. And I do happen to have four headphone amps right now that have a four pin XLR output on them. And that would be the Topping A90 Discrete, the Feo K9 Pro ESS version, the Hi-Fi Man EF400, and the Audio GD Master 9, which has been sort of my reference amp for quite a while now. Um, had that, I think, three years, three and a half years now. Excuse me just a second. So anyway, um, getting into the sound, like I said, I've listened to both of these cables. I've got several hours on both of them. But I have not actually compared them to any other cables, which I will do a side-by-side -side comparison, which will be a little bit tough because to do that, what I have to do is try one cable with whatever amp, whatever headphone I'm going to use, and then switch out the cable. So there's going to be a little bit of a time gap there. So I have to kind of go by memory to do that. The ideal way to, to test cables, to compare them, to see if there is a sound difference, would be to have two identical amps and two identical headphones and put your two cables and two systems side by side using the same source and be able to go directly back and forth between the two headphones using the two cables. That would be the ideal way to do it, but I do not have two identical amps and I do not have two identical headphones that I can do that. So someone that does have that set up might be able to find a small difference that I might not be able to because I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to have like a 30 second, maybe a minute gap in between switching out cables so it will be a little bit tough but i'm going to do the best i can so anyway and one other thing i did want to point out is most of the time when i hear someone talk about how a cable improved the sound of their headphone what i find out they did is they went from using a single-ended cable on a balanced amp to use in a balance cable and they reported a significant improvement in the sound. Okay, so most of the time they give the cable the credit for that improved sound, but if you're using a balanced amp, an amp that's designed as balanced, if you're using the single-ended output, there is almost always going to be a sound improvement going to the balanced output. Number one, you usually double or even quadruple the power available out of your balanced output, but usually the balanced output usually has a better signal to noise ratio. It usually has a better um, ratio of stereo separation. There's a lot of factors and most amps in fact, every amp I have reviewed up to this point that is designed as balanced does sound better from its balanced output. So it's not a fair comparison, in, you know, by my standards, to compare a single-ended cable to a balanced cable when you're using one from the single-ended output of an amp and the other from the balanced. So I'm going to try to stick with just balanced cables in my comparison and only using the balanced output of my amps. So um, for my comparison, I do have, um, I've got stock and upgrade cables from Kennerton. Some of the upgrades are very nice. They're similar to these. We can use um, a copper lits type of wire. I've got um, an upgrade cable from Meza. It's their silver plated cable that was designed for the, um, the 99 Classic. I've got um, an Apos Flow cable that I did a review on a while back, maybe a year and a half ago. So anyway, and I've got some cables uh, from ZMF. And so anyway, I do have several cables I can compare to these and that's going to be my goal. So anyway, so far what I've come up with, these cables sound great. I mean, I've listened to both of them, both with the Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth, with the uh, Kennerton Thrower, and they sound outstanding. 
So, and like I said, the build quality, the materials, everything is very nice about these. And, but, you know, my goal for my full review of these is to actually compare these side by side with other cables, see if it actually makes a difference. And like I said, I, I don't know what the results are going to be. So I'm trying to go into this with an open mind and, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of people, electrical engineers will tell you the cable, as long as it's good quality and there's no defects in the cable, that the cable material, the gauge, all that isn't going to make a difference. But I don't know. So, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. So I'm going to, that's going to be my job for the next couple of weeks to listen to these and find out if it really does make a difference. But even if it doesn't, they still, they're very nice cables, very high quality, they look great, they feel great, and I mean, they're great cables, even if it doesn't make a difference, but um, I'll try to get back to you in about three weeks and let you know how, you know, what I find out. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you're all welcome to join us at the Headphone Experience on Facebook, which is up to 20.7 20, thousand members. So, I uh, hope, hope to see you over there, and once again, thanks for watching my video.